What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, um, there is rumor of people over at the, at Warner Brothers Discovery that believe that don't believe in James Gunn's ability to bring value to the DCU like J Zaslav wants them. Why? Because James Gunn has never run anything before. Brian, I, I, I got to hear your thoughts on this. I, I, I have mine, but I'm pretty sure yours are in line with mine. But I want to hear what you have to say about this. What are your thoughts on people thinking just because this guy has never done it before? But I'm pretty sure, you know, he's, he's in the movie business. He prefers to do movies rather than run this. Now he's an opportunity. Brian, what do you think? Well, first off, it's a statement of fact. He's never had a role like this before. DC has never had a person really doing this before. Yeah, yeah. But I think there's a flawed premise in there, especially in this business, that experience guarantees success. There's a lot of people who have run things around Hollywood that have train wrecked things in the exactly. superhero genre. Yeah, like I, Walter Hamada, mixed track record. He's got experience running things. He's now running yeah. horror for Paramount. Like yeah. he got fired. That's what experience got him. Yeah. There was a time when Kevin Feige had never run anything either. When he exactly. did Iron Man 1, what had he exactly. run prior exactly. to that? I mean, every, every great, executive starts somewhere every get produce actor starts somewhere right so that's why i say experience doesn't guarantee success what james gunn's mission has two parts to it but we have focused on what we are on board with what we are liking is that part one of his mission was to clean try to clean up the mess of the past 15 plus years by and large of DC projects dating back to if you want to go back to like Superman Returns even. he is doing a commendable job of that in my opinion and I think in your opinion in that he has a four year window and he is going aggressive he's like if I'm going to do this and this is my one shot at this I am going for it I respect that from someone especially when the half measures for DC have not worked consistently. You can't say that they have. Yeah. That part of it we like so far. The harder part we haven't discussed yet, which is can he build a truly successful DCU that satisfies both hardcore fans and draws in mass audiences? To, we we don't th that part you and I haven't explored yet. We don't know. But you couldn't say that with certainty about anyone in this business outside of maybe Kevin Feige, if he had yeah. come over. Yeah. So that's a list of one. Yeah. So we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll do our shows where we start to break down. Like what, what would we, what advice would we give him? How would we approach this? And as we start to get news next year, we'll evaluate. Yeah. Is he, is he, is he making good first step? Is he not like, we'll be honest about that. But the first part of this was, Someone needed to have the gumption to basically take a step back in order to try to go forward. And I think he's done a better than expected job of stepping up to the plate, putting his name and his reputation on the line and saying, we're going to swing for this and we're going to start over for real. Yeah. And, and, and all we needed was somebody to make some really harsh decisions or what seemed to be harsh decisions but in reality were the right decisions without any question of what needed to be done he made it clear from the jump so uh that's what has me excited about this direction and brian already he, and this is something that we talked about in a few a few episodes ago with regards to how would you start right My, i thought you know start with the justice league and, and and you were saying a little bit more traditional, but already he's talking about getting inspiration from Justice League Unlimited. That is, when I heard that, Brian, I was like, 
I started watching just League Unlimited, and yeah. it's like, and it's like, yo, how can you not? You know, right? Zip code. You're you're getting warmer. You start heading in that direction. And we so, that's when you and I have said this for years. It's like the best thing about DC and the most consistent thing about DC has been the animated library, the animated library, TV and film. It's yeah. like there's. Disney's making more money off a of live action Lion King than they made off of animated Lion King. It's literally the same movie. <laughs> How hard is this? Yeah. Like you could just take some of the animated stuff and just make it live action. And it's that that's your billion dollar project sitting right there. But even if he's just using it as one of his inspirations, kudos. You're in the right, you're in the right ballpark. Because mm, yeah, those yeah. are great products. Yeah. And this again, there's no guarantee this will work, but I just, I just struggle with the people who are hung up on things like the Cavill decision. And I just challenge them to say, you can, you're really convinced that you think you can get 10 years of awesome upside out of that, that version and that universe and him fighting Dwayne Johnson. Like I, I did. There, even if there's like a little bit of near-term upside, that's not what David Zaslav is paying James Gunn and Peter Saffron to harvest. Yeah. He's asking them to give him the MCU. 22 movies in 12 years that averaged over a billion dollars a box. <laughs> that's what he asked them to do. And the stuff they already had in the hopper just wasn't going to be that. So... You got to switch. You got to go for the upside. I mean, this is the definition of going in the draft and being like, I can draft a college senior who can play right away and is probably going to be on my team for 10 years, but is never going to make an all star team. Or I can draft Victor Wembanyama and he might go to the Hall of Fame. He might bust, but he might go mm. to the Hall of Fame. You should mm. do the latter if you're Warner mm. Brothers. You got to try. And that, you said it right there. You got to try. You got to try. This is the opportunity to do so. And uh, I'm excited for it because we don't know what's coming. We have an idea, but we don't know what's coming. All we know that is we're going in a different direction. It isn't in the same direction where we experienced all this polarizing content that really wasn't doing any good for the fans and wasn't doing any good for, for Warner Brothers in their pockets. And that's what they're really concerned of, about, yeah. right? You know, and, and Zaslav is calling for what it is. And all those people who were talking about, oh, this is not a competition. We're doing nothing. Get out of here with that, yo. Get out of here with that. At the end of the day, it's all about what Marvel was doing and was, and was doing consistently and making bank on bad movies. Not all of them were bad, but even the ones that were, but some of the ones that were bad were making bank. Bank. Yeah, that's the studio's view. As we said last time with the budgets, like it's a little bit of a tangent, but it's right on yes. point. There's a there's a new set of interviews out this week on Light the Fuse, which I I highly recommend. It, it, the guys over there do a fantastic job. They have a three part interview with Chris McQuarrie, who comes on like periodically with them. In there, he gives a unique window into his partnership with Tom Cruise and how they think about an idea before it becomes a movie, which it got me thinking, like that's effectively what DC's doing right now. Mm -hmm. And Macquarie describes this pitch that he went to Cruise with, which basically was a hard R action concept. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he said like, Cruise reads it. He's like, this is awesome. And then immediately switches to, he looks at the script and he says, okay, how much money do we need to make this idea great? Okay, if that's the number we need, how much money do we then need to be like, how much money do we then need to be able to make off that for this movie to be a hit? That's it. Like you're mm. hearing one of the most successful money makers in Hollywood where he takes the idea and immediately his mindset goes to budget, box office. How do I make it work? That's all this is in the yeah. end. So all these people who are like grousing about this, that, and the other thing, that's it. That's all it is. Idea, budget, box. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you get if you get the first two right, you'll generally get the third, right? Which is the point of if the idea is good, it's written well, you'll get the money for it. But if you get the budget wrong, as we saw with Black Adam, 
then you lose money even when there's 400 million worth of tickets being sold. So you have to get the budget right to go with the idea before you can start printing the money. And if you hit it big, like something like Joker, right? Where the budget was what, $40 million and they made a billion, <laughs> right? You, you get a couple of those in there. Now you're talking, because now you can withstand a B minus movie along the yeah. way where you're only making a little bit. That's the game, people. That's it. That's just too easy. No, no, no. It's too easy. It's too easy. No, no, no. It's too easy. And people don't seem to realize that. Listen, we don't know anything about making movies or anything like that, but come on. You know, you just can't throw names. We want Denzel Washington for this and all the big name stars. We want it for these characters. And not even thinking about how much this is going to cost. No. They just, people are just thinking, let's make the movies with these people. And it, and it just doesn't work that way. You know, at the end of the day, these guys want to make money. And we got people in there like James Gunn who are trying to make money, but also trying to make good movies with these characters and do them justice because it hasn't been done the right way. So, and, and I, I keep saying the right way. We, we don't know what the right way is, but just a better way, let's say, you know? Yeah, a different way. That, that's, yeah. yeah, that's that's the point is that DC has done things a certain way for a long time. And as we've said many times, there have been incredible highs. The Chris Nolan Dark Knight trilogy. Um, you have to say Joker is an incredible high. It's the most successful R-rated movie of all time. I think the Batman earlier this year is a high. But, and, you know, let's call it for what it is. Aquaman is an incredible high. They made a billion one on that movie. As, as crazy as that might seem, <laughs> In studio parlance, that's an A+. Plus. But the lows have been far too many. Too many, yeah. And the losses when they hit lows are far too big. That's the other problem. It's like when they lose, they're losing a lot. When Marvel has a sub, like we we've been talking, we'll get to it. We've been talking about Marvel box office this year. None of those movies are in the red, people. Thor Love and Thunder, yeah, it's down from the last movie. Still made like 750. That movie firmly made money. A couple hundred million bucks. Like that's when you're at the point where that's your downside, studios are fine. They're sleeping easy. That's not where DC is. They can't afford to be making these movies and fail. No, and 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 to our point about cost and cash and money, George R. R. Martin the other day, writer of Game of Thrones, we know. That's been one of the most successful things that Warner Brother and HBO have done together. They got a ton of spinoffs coming. The John Stowe spinoff, House of Dragon was a huge hit. George R.R. Martin put an ominous blurb in there where he said, Warner Brothers' cash situation is affecting the Game of, the Thron Game of Thrones universe. Listen, people, if they're cutting budgets and cutting projects in that universe, which has done nothing but print them money for 10 years, don't tell me that it doesn't matter a ton to what's going on at DC. Warner Brothers is making moves with a close eye on the wallet right now. I say people who are complaining, stop complaining. Follow, as... follow Zachary Levi, Mr. Shazam. He All he said was, give him a chance, man. Like, <laughs> give him a chance for two seconds. Damn, it's like, yo, I just got in here. I'm telling you, I want to do great things. I want to do great things, but no, we want the same. Come on, really, yo? That's like it reminds me of Mr. Mom, where the kid didn't wouldn't didn't want to get rid of his whoop his whoopie. It's like, come on. That's what I mean. It's like so if they if if conversely James Gunn had come on and said we're bringing back Zack Snyder and we're greenlighting Justice League two to continue the Zack Snyder Justice League. So in theory, the social media response would have been glowing. But you and I would be getting on her saying, uh, are we sure? Like this may be, but <laughs> there's no track record to say that should be a $2 billion movie, which is what it ought to be. That would be, a, in my mind, that's as, every bit as much of a financial risk for the studio as what they're doing now. Yeah. Which is how they look at it. Yeah. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think once again about this James Gunn 
situation. Are you excited for what James Gunn and Peter Safran have in store for the DCU? And it's fine to be nervous. We're nervous too. All we're saying is there's a little bit of excitement and hope in that nervousness now that maybe we yeah. didn't have before. That's the difference. But we're still nervous. Don't get us wrong. Like we're not. Don't get it twisted. We're not calling this a lock by any means. But it's is is a, is a nervous excitement. Yeah. Um, this can more totally... of the same. More of the same was not exciting to us. Yeah. Please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Share it with your friends. We really do appreciate when you when you guys comment in the comment section and um, continue to uh, let us know what you guys think. Um, hit that like button, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. Woo!